friend of Joyce Parsons is fighting breast cancer. She is going through treatments now in Morgantown and will have surgery in January. Please remember the family of Dorothy Pugh in your prayers as she died in an auto accident Tuesday. We're very sad to announce that Randy Snyder passed away last Saturday. He was laid to rest yesterday. Londa Shear's mother is not doing well. She is in her last days. Please pray for her and her family. Please pray for Kim Holden, who had a stroke and is in Encompass for rehab. She is a co-worker of Ann's. Also pray for Dennis Martin's brother, Dale Waggle. He had surgery Tuesday and is in a lot of pain. Bill Spears, uh, we believe, has recovered from COVID now. He has been moved to Cedar Grove due to uh, other problems he's experiencing. Please remember him in your prayers also. Also please remember Paul Lemon in your prayers as he deals with health concerns. And in your bullet it says that Kathy and Patrick Casanelli both have flu-like symptoms. That's no longer the case. Um, and they have been tested and are COVID free. However, Kathy is suffering from a case of shingles. So please remember her in your prayers also. Um, is there any others that are sick that I failed to mention? Ben and Abby will be getting married. Uh, next Saturday. We hope to live stream it. Uh, in Mississippi at 2 o'clock. We are hoping to live stream that, so you can probably watch it there. <laughs> um, next Sunday, Isaiah Casanelli will be uh, our guest speaker both morning and evening uh, while Elvis and Ann are traveling. Please remember them and their family uh, in your prayers for safe travel. Um, one further announcement. Our old computer that we've replaced, uh, the one that we used to, to do the overhead projector stuff here, is uh, back there on the back table. It is. It will be, uh, as of April 10th, 10 years old. Um, there's also a box back there with a slot in it. We will leave that box there until next Sunday following morning worship service. If you think you want that computer and you would like to place a sale bid on it, put your name and uh, whatever your bid is, and next Sunday following worship service, uh, the elders will open that and We'll be contacting whoever places the winning bid. Anything else that needs to be announced? Mike's going to be leading our singing this morning. Everybody join us. Turn your song books or follow behind on the screen to page 25. We'll sing the first three verses of Anywhere but Jesus I can safely go Anywhere he leads me in this world below Anywhere without him here his joys would be Anywhere but Jesus I am not afraid
Say, trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his inopportunity, inop, inop, he will arise and give him as many as he needeth. Let's get our Heavenly Father in prayer together this morning. Gracious and eternal Heavenly Father, what a wonderful blessing it is to be able to assemble with your people and to express our joy and our love for you and our worship, Heavenly Father. We're so thankful for the ability to be able to come here and do that. We're most thankful, Heavenly Father, for the Savior. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we will never take his sacrifice for granted and that every day, Heavenly Father, we'll be able to speak with it with love and joy to others. And we pray, Heavenly Father, to be with us as we strive to do your will here at sunrise. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to be with those who are sick this morning, who are sick in spirit and mind and heart. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you be with them. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to be with the family of Brother Randy, who's passed away, and we ask you, Heavenly Father, to, to bless them and, and comfort them. We know there are many, Heavenly Father, who cannot assemble with us this morning because of sickness or fear of sickness, and we ask you, Heavenly Father, to be with them especially. We pray, Heavenly Father, that they will feel that they are loved, and we pray, Heavenly Father, for their return as, as soon as possible. We're thankful for the prayers you have answered, Heavenly Father. The safe return of some, the healing of the sick. We thank the Heavenly Father for the skill and knowledge you've given the scientists and doctors. They were able to develop a vaccine and have answered our prayers, Lord, and we're thankful for that. Pray, Heavenly Father, be with us as we <clears throat> struggle with sin from time to time in our lives. We ask the Heavenly Father to help you be with us and make us stronger. Pray, Heavenly Father, we will serve you better in the future. We ask you to go with us now, Heavenly Father, and pray that you be with us throughout the course of our lives. And pray for faithful service to you, Heavenly Father, will be our lives until that day when we have that home with you in heaven. And we ask it all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Sing page 105. Try to prepare our minds for Lord's Supper with this song. <clears throat> when we meet in sweet communion. Oh. 
this has been the first day of the week, the day that Christ set aside and said for us to perform this, uh, for taking in the Lord's Supper that we do. We want to remember uh, what it's about and what it's for. And remember that Christ, the suffering that he went through and the sacrifice that he made voluntarily. He done it all for one free will. So that we would have a chance for uh, eternal life when our life here is through. And knowing that man's memory is short and not the best in things, uh, Christ set this up and do it every week, first day of the week, so that we would not forget. So keep these things in mind as we partake of this, and let's give thanks for the bread. Father, we're so thankful for this bread that has been prepared, Father, to represent the body of Christ that have hung on the cross as the one as he died to pay the price for our sins so that we could have the eternal life. We pray, Father, that take this it'll be done in a way that be pleasing unto you and we ask you please forgive us of our sins in Jesus name we pray Amen Continue our thanks for the fruit of the vine Father thank you so much for that fruit of the vine which represents the blood that flowed on that cross on Calvary that day that washed away our sins. And we pray, Father, that uh, as we take of it, it will be done in a way pleasing to you. And uh, we pray that you bless us, Father, and please bless us as we partake of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Page 693, 693, we'll sing the uh, first three verses of this. <clears throat> there is much to do, there is work on every hand, part the drive for help come bringing through the land. Jesus calls the reapers by the sacred What will thou, the Master, hear my singing?
642. <clears throat> Sweet are the promises, kind is the word, dear and far than any message better heard. Your love is the mind of Christ, sinless I see. He the great example is a pattern for me. When he leads out far, all the way. When he leads out far. Certainly glad you're with us this morning. Interesting story Tyler read just a few moments ago where the man came knocking on his friend's door looking for bread. Late at night, in these times, most places were a one room type situation where everybody slept in that same room. So if the one person got up, then everybody would presumably wake up when they, you know, when someone would come into the room and things like that. But we're gonna come back to that story, but, it, but you can imagine that, if you will, if someone's knocking on your door late at night, you're already in bed, your, your kids are in bed, and they're come asking for three loaves of bread. What would you do? What would you do? This morning we want to really look at prayer and we can kind of continue on um, or we return to the subject that Jesus had started back in chapter 6 
which when discussing prayer. And we have to wonder why did our Lord discuss prayer at this point in his message? Uh, these verses seem to be an interpretation, but they are not. We are human, fallible, and we make mistakes. Only God can judge perfectly. Therefore, we must pray and seek his wisdom and his direction. And so when I, I want to think about prayer, as we think about them, I want to think about how we pray, if you will, what we pray for, and our persistence level. Our persistence level. Some things we're very persistent at, aren't we? And other things, not so much. But when we see all the examples in prayer, we see this persistence. James chapter 1 and verse 5 says, If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generally to all, generally to all without reproach, and it will be given him. So when we think of what we need most, what, you know, what would you say that we need most? Sorry. What would you, well, you yeah. go 15 slides ahead. So, you know, what would you say that we need most? Well, in our day and age, and probably back in their day and age, we need wisdom, don't we? And we'll see that different people in the Bible pray for wisdom. If you lack wisdom, well, we certainly need wisdom in the world that we live in. But I want you to notice the story in 1 Kings chapter 3 and verses 5 through 9. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. Now, Solomon is the son of David. David is quoted in a different passage about being a man after God's own heart. But if we look at, by the way, this passage is a commentary on David himself. We'll get, when we get to it. But if you look at David's life, even though he's said to be a man after God's own heart, he had failures and sin in his life. Now, he will look at this passage as kind of a commentary, and this is from his son, Solomon. So Solomon has a dream by night, and God said to Solomon, ask what I shall give you. Wouldn't you like that, that the God can't, just comes to you and say, well, what do you want? What do you want me to give to you? What, what would you say? Would you say, well, I want a, a, a bigger house. I, I want a, a nicer car. I want, you know, this or that, you know, less cavities. I don't know. I want to be skinnier. I want to be heavy, you know, whatever your situation. What would you say that you wanted? If God came to you and said, hey, you know, what do you want? I want my kids to be happy. You know, what would you say? There's, there could be a thousand different things that, that you could say. So God comes to Solomon and says, Solomon, it's all you, buddy. What do you want? Ask what I shall give you. Solomon said, you have shown great steadfast love to your servant David, my father. So he begins talking about his dad. Well, you've shown love to my dad. Because, now here's the commentary on David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, in uprightness of heart towards you, and you have kept for him this great steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of David, my father, although I am but a little child. So he says all these great things about his dad. Says, listen, he, he, you know, he, he doesn't say a single word about his dad's faults. We know his dad had faults. We know his dad had many faults. We know his dad was a, was a sinner. But he doesn't say a single word about that. He says, listen, he, you know, my dad is this person that lived a, a good life. He lived an uprighteous life. He, you know, he was a, a man in your own sight. And, and you have loved him and protected him. And now, oh my God, you, you put me in this spot to be king, even though I'm what? Just a little child. I'm young. And here's what he begins to pray for. And your servant in the midst of your people who you have chosen, a great people, too many to number and uh, count for multiple, multiple. And give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people. He, he asked for an understanding mind. 
It says that I may discern between what? Good or evil? Who is able to govern this great people? So here Solomon says, listen, of all the things that I need, I need an understanding mind. I need wisdom. I need to know. I'm, I'm young. I need to know what to do. I need to know what to do, who to put in what places, and, and different things like that. And he began with these three exhortations. Now we go back to Matthew chapter 7. Jesus begins with these three. He says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek, you'll find. Knock, and it'll be opened unto you. Now, now, this is kind of mysterious because we see these three things here, and they say, well, wait a minute. Um, I, I prayed to God one time, and two times, three times, and I asked for something, and God did not give it to me. And, and so does that mean that, that God doesn't listen to me? Does that mean that, that, that God doesn't hear me? Does that mean that, that God chose not to answer my prayer because of something I did? That, you know, you know, we can run all these scenarios through our mind, but when we look back at Scripture, it says, ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, knock. I want you to think about this. And I don't know if your parents were anything like my parents. And I wanted to go to, first off, came to my Kmart last night. Of course, there's no more Kmart around here. Because this is where we went when I was a child. I grew up in the Detroit area, south, southwest Detroit. And we didn't have Walmarts. Walmarts, I don't even think they existed back then. We didn't have that. We had Kmart. Kmart was the big store that everybody went to like Walmarts is now. And so every, you know, at least once a week or, or more, my parents would end up at Kmart. And when I'd go with them, now they would have this big <coughs> bin of balls. You've probably seen them. You know, the balls are, are bouncy balls, probably about so big. They still sell those in some places. And they'd just pile, you know, maybe 50 or 75 or 100 of these balls into this big bin. And I'd go walking by there, and I was like a, a you know, I was like a dog when they saw a squirrel. <sighs> Balls. <laughs> and they weren't very expensive. And so I would, and, and you had to be a little, I don't know why they displayed them like this, because you have to be a little tricky to get one out at a time, because sometimes when you pull one, 16 come out. And I'd, I'd always get one out, and you'd hear, you know, my, 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 my mom and dad were a couple hours away because they'd see the balls coming. Ooh, you know. <laughs> And I was all of a sudden here, boom, 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 the ball bouncing on the ground. Oh, I, and, and I could have 200 balls at home. I did. But every time I went to the store, I, I needed a ball. That was just me. Maybe you're different. But you know, my dad said, you know, I didn't have 200 balls at home. He looked at me and said, son, you don't need that ball. But dad... No, son, you don't need that ball. We bought you a ball five years ago. It died. Well, I guess you should take better care of your ball. <laughs> you don't need the ball. Now, if that didn't work, he would do use this one. I never bought this, but I know he did. We don't have the money. This wouldn't be the I become your banker, Dad, you know. But then, if all things fail, what do you do? Mom, can you please have a ball? Guess what? Sometimes that works. A little clue for those younger ones. <laughs> and, and God is sometimes like that with us. Sometimes God just says, you may not understand why, but no. Not now, maybe not ever. But when we talk about prayer, prayer is one half of the conversation. Now, I cannot just take my Bible and read it because that's the other half of the conversation. I remember talking to my uncle uh, quite a bit when we were younger, when I was younger anyway. He was always old. 
and, and uh, he was a World War II veteran and things like that. And I would, I, I would not, you know, many times I'd go play with my buddies down the street, but a lot of times I'd, I'd go sit with my uncle. He'd just sit out in his yard. I'd sit there. And, and sometimes we'd sit there next to each other for a half hour and nobody would say a word. And other times he would just with information. Now what I had to do, I would ask him one question. What do you think would be a good question to ask someone that was in World War II? Can you tell me something about the war? It, what, what a pretty, for those of you who are too young to know, it wasn't a pretty war. There was nothing pretty about it. Paul Kuffner, he sit over somewhere near where Mark is sitting there, and, and we'd go over to his house and, and visit with him. And I know Danny had gone over there with me once or twice, I think, and, and, and Paul would just talk about what? The war. He talked about driving the tanks. Can you imagine that? I, I've never, you know, barely seen a tank. Can you imagine? Her? And so it, it, it's a two way conversation, isn't it? Prayer is our talking, our, our way of talking to God. Uh, you know, and it could be anything from asking for things to telling him all our troubles to to, to praising him and, and all these different things. It's the only way we can talk to God. And we have to package it up in, in this thing that we call prayer. And God's way of talking to us, back to us, it is through scripture. And, and you just can't have one, a one-sided conversation without both ways working. And I know it's not your usual conversation if you're sitting down next to someone and, and you're talking to them and them talking back to you, but it's the way God, you know, God expects. We ask them and we seek and we knock. Now, I want you to notice Jesus just doesn't say ask and walk away. He has these other two things here too. To seek and knock. We'll see a couple illustrations in a, in a few moments that Jesus is going to give in Matthew chapter 7 about really how good the Father is. You ask for a loaf, what do we get? You ask for a fish, what do we get? Now his comments on prayer go to a lesser to greater argument. You'll see this a couple times, lesser to greater, lesser to greater. And, and in other words, how much more will your Heavenly Father give you than, than, than anybody else. And, and when I think of this, I think of this song, it's called How Deep the Father's Love for Us. Maybe you know that song, maybe you don't. It's a, a song that the teens usually sing at SunQuest and, not SunQuest, what do you call that thing? CYC and you know, we sing at SunQuest too, but other things, youth events, Bible camp and things like that. It goes, how deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. There's about four more verses. But how deep is that love for us? How much will God give to us? And, and certainly he will give so much for us. So when we look at, at Matthew 7, verse 7, and we see, ask it be given to you, seek will find, not going to be open, for everyone who asks receives, well, everyone who seeks finds, the one who knocks will be open. So three different imperatives Jesus emphasized here of prayer. First, asking it is an ordinary reference to prayer. But we do that all the time. We understand that. We understand how to ask for things. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 22 says, that Whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. John chapter 14 and verse 13, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may glorify, may be glorified in the Son. So then we have seeking and knocking. They're, they're used metaphorically here. Revelation verse three, chapter 3 and verse 20, we see this. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. Have you ever knocked at anybody's door? I was knocking on a lot of doors. I started knocking on doors when I was 10 years old because I had a paper route. That's how I got paid. You owe me a buck and a half. We know you're in there. We saw the TV on. <laughs> Some people would hide, you know, 
you hear noise coming, you know, you come up to the porch, you hear noises and TV and everything, and you, shh, it's the paper boy. You know, nowadays, I guess you use an envelope or give that credit card or whatever it is. But back then, we actually had to knock and collect. You know, knocking at the door. Well, what doors are we knocking on? Everyone hears my voice and opens the door. I will come in and eat with him and they with me. So it's Jesus actually saying that in Revelations chapter 3 and verse 20. So Jesus here, it's kind of reversed. We're not knocking the door. Jesus is knocking on the door of our hearts. Saying, hey, I'm trying to get your attention. They met at home. So now Luke records two parables. And these parables are really the seek and knock, really the knock, the persistence. I'm not going away from your front door. Now, the first parable is from Luke chapter 11, 5 through 8. That's what Tyler read just a few moments ago. A man came to his friend's house at midnight to borrow some uh, breakfast supplies should be bread for his guests. Uh, he had a surprise guest coming in and he came to, to borrow bread. Now, bread in those days was a loaf. The slicer was not invented yet, so it was a whole loaf. Now, if you come to my house and you knock on the door and say, can I borrow some bread? And I hand you out a loaf that is broken. That's what they did. They, you know, pulled some off of the bread. That would, that to, to you, that would be considered an insult that I gave you bread that had already been broken. But can't even give me a fresh loaf of bread? Come on, you know. Now, if, if that's just, that was their custom back then. They considered a whole loaf of bread to be, you know, what you, you know, when somebody come to your house, that's what you give them, a whole loaf of bread. So, you know, in this case, this guy needs three loaves of bread. So when you look at the story in, in Luke chapter 11, how did he get it? Because at first, the guy says, listen, my, my kids are in bed. The lights are out. Can't you see the lights are out? The guy keeps knocking at the door. I really need the bread. Persistence. Here's our seek and knock, isn't it? When we ask something of God, our, our, it, it comes along with this. First of all, we have to be looking for the answer. We're, we, when I, if, so I said, I, I communicate with him through prayer. How does he communicate with me? We said through scripture. So we have to be, you know, we pray. Now, now what I'm going to do, I'm listening. Where do I listen? Right here. Okay. Now I have to find, now you might say, where do I go to find the answer to prayer? It's kind of coded, isn't it? What book do I look in for that? I don't know. Well, I guess you have to start at the beginning and go to the end. Because you might find it there somewhere. Or maybe you just might trip on it. Now, the other story is this. Luke 18, it should actually be 1 through 8. You get two stories if you go all the way to verse 18. But we'll look at that here in, in Luke 18. You have a, in beginning, verse 1, now he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought not to pray and not to lose heart. A certain city, there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. There was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him saying, give me legal protection from my opponent. For while he was unwilling, but after he said to himself, even though I do not fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she'll wear me out. Isn't that something? This woman doesn't believe, or this judge doesn't believe in God or anything else, but this woman, widow comes to her and says, listen, I need you to give me legal protection. No, thank you, ma'am. I, I, I'm not going to do that. I really want you to give me legal protection. You need to give me legal protection. And she just goes on. And once the guy says, okay, okay, okay. This woman is going to do what? Wear me out. I want you to know that Jesus 
Tell us both these stories, first of all. To get the message across to us how we should be with prayer. Is, is, is Jesus giving us a hint that we maybe need to wear prayer out? We, we may need to, to wear God's ear out and, and keep going to God so much? Now, now, as he goes on in verse 9, he says, Or which of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone, or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? So first, Jesus says, what man is there? If his you know, son asks for a loaf of bread, will give him a stone. This is a, a self-answer question. Nobody, none. Nobody's going to do that. And, and, and then we, you know, Matthew chapter 4, and verse 3, we see something similar here. The tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of man, command that these stones become what? Bread. So Jesus, this is kind of familiar to him because, you know, the saint came to him and said, hey, you're these stones. If you're the son of God, make them bread. Of course, we know how that ended up. Now, Jesus used the art of repetition to ask a similar question, or if he asked for a fish, would give him a snake? Well, he won't. So again, the answer is no. Now, bread and fish represent the foods most commonly used in those days in the Sea of Galilee area. We have the feeding of 5,000. We have the feeding of 4,000. What were they fed? Bread and fish. So that was the most common use of those things. Luke chapter 11, verse 12, or if he asks for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion. No, they wouldn't do that. Uh, so verse 11, if you then be evil, as, as Jesus kind of concludes his thought here, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So now he brings in parents. Most Parents are generally good. Unless, you know, every now and then you get a few that maybe shouldn't have children. I don't know. But overall, parents are good, right? They would never give anything bad to their child. For a matter of fact, sometimes they would go the extra distance to give them good things to their child. So again, Jesus uses this lesser to greater argument to demonstrate that God is always generous to his people. In doing so, he referred to his listeners as evil. You might think of this like, wait a minute. Why is he calling us evil, them evil? Now, now the word which appears eight times in this sermon is here used in comparison to God. So compared to God, well, certainly you know, God's perfectly good. What well, would be, you know, even the best parents are shown to be evil compared to God. But good parents want only the best for their children. Now, since human parents want to supply the needs of their children, we know that our Heavenly Father will certainly meet the needs of his children. Look at Philippians 4, verse 19. And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches in his glory in Christ Jesus. First Peter 5, 7 says, cast your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And James 1, 17 says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. So God is providing for us. Coming down from the Father of life, so there is no variation or shadow do change. God desires to bless us. God desires to bless his children. However, we kind of look at this interestingly, don't we? We think of this ask, seek, knock. What we're asking, what are we asking for? Many times it's things we don't need. I'll take you back to King March with me again. King March would appreciate the business, I guess. Did I really need that ball? No. 
matter of fact, after a while, I drove my parents so crazy that they said to my sister, can we leave him home with you? <laughs> well, I know what she said. <coughs> no, thank you. <laughs> that leads to another story you've probably heard before when they finally took me to Sears one day and forgot I was with them and left me there without him. You know. <laughs> Did I need the bomb? No. Why did I want the bomb? When I think about it later, the bomb was an emotional purchase. You know what an emotional purchase is? That's why they put, when you go to checkouts and grocery stores and things like that, they, they put all this stuff around the checkout that you don't need. I don't think you need one thing. There's gift cards sometimes. There's all kinds of candy. We know we definitely don't need that. Sometimes it's even if you get thirsty, like I am a little bit right now, there's, you know, a, a pop cooler there to get your soda pop, whichever way you're going to call it. There's, there's sometimes these magazines that are not worth buying there. But those are all emotional purchases. Sometimes we get emotional purchases on things that are much bigger. Something, you know, I, I bought a, a roll of candy six, eight months ago and it's up in Amish country with a, a cherry crown, uh, something cherry. And I saw it one of the little Amish stores and, and it was $1.19 for a roll of candy. I thought, wow, that's expensive. But you know what? My dad brought those home from the factory when I was a kid. So I had to spend that $1.19 or whatever it was. And, and then I brought it home and the aunt says, can I have one? I said, no. So I set it on my desk at home and I let it sit there for months and months and months. I, I wouldn't even open the candy because it was such an emotional purchase. Why well, one day I just open it? Oh, that's good. I remember that. I too. <laughs> I don't know if you ever got one or not. I don't remember. They're gone. Too late now. But sometimes that's the way we act with prayer. We throw everything at God that's on the aisle by the checkout counter. Say, God, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this. I think sometimes we need to learn how to talk to God. But there, there's a balance in prayer, isn't there? I mean, sure, we ask for things and expect God to give us things. But then we, we, we need to, you know, how would you feel if somebody, every time they came to you, all they did was ask for things? That's it. If we see Mark, 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 can you do this for me? Mark, can you do that for me? Mark, would you do this, 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 this? Not, not even say, how you doing, Mark, or anything like this, but just ask for all these things. Hey, that's all I got for you, Mark. You know, I'll be back tomorrow with seven more things. It's a balance. Maybe. You just might want to tell God about your day. If you have worry and stress, we talked about worry and stress a couple weeks ago, and I know with the things with COVID and our government, the way it is and everything going on, you might have a little bit of worry and stress in your life. You know, instead of putting that on Facebook, let God know. Hey, you know, this is crazy, you know. You, you could tell him whatever you want to tell him, and he's not going to say, well, you're crazy. Or you can tell him whatever you want to tell him. Now, once I do that, I talk to God. I ask for things. I give him glory. He's, he, he is God. He's, you know, the Heavenly Father. I give him glory and praise for being who he is. I let him know what's in my heart. then I have to listen for his answer. It's here, isn't it? Now, a lot of times we, we, we think that we just wait for his answer. Maybe we don't even pick up our Bible and say, God's going to answer me. And I've heard some people say, well, I've had a feeling or something like that. God, it usually doesn't work that way. 
out of our generation? The answer is through his word. But notice, that's asking. Seeking is looking for the answer. Knocking is taking the two together and being persistent. Persistently asking and persistently seeking. <clears throat> persistently asking for God to do this. Now I want you to go back and, and remember Solomon for a second. What did he ask for? He, he didn't ask for for all these different things. God, I, I wish that I had some more money. He might wish that. I wish I had a nicer place. I wish I had some more wives. Don't wish that one. But... <laughs> Guess what he got? Because he asked for wisdom, God gave him wisdom. A lot of it. God made him the richest man, basically, to walk on the face of the earth. God gave him more wives, whether they wanted or not. God gave him everything. Ask, seek, knock. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 says this. But seek first the kingdom of God. So he's going to provide all your physical things, isn't it? We, we live, live in a country where you're not going to go hungry. It's just basically not going to happen. There's going to be, if you can't provide for yourself, someone in somewhere is going to help you. Well, you might have to ask, though. I'll be honest there. But we're talking about spiritual things. What do I have to do? I have to seek to get those. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added to you. This morning, if you're not yet a Christian, why not? Why not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God that he died for your sins? We ask that you confess him. We just ask you the question, do you believe, yes or no? When you're baptized in the water behind me, it's a hot tub temperature, Water, grave, or baptism to raise up and walk in newness of life. Maybe you've done that and you need prayers. We'll pray with you for you. Why don't you come as we stand and as we sing? I have decided to follow.
we thank you for the many blessings which you've given us in this life. Uh, we thank you, Father, for uh, uh, bringing us some visitors today. And uh, we just pray, Father, that as we leave here and go our separate ways, that you will watch over our seeds, keep us safe, and guide us in the decisions that we have to make as we go through this day. Uh, again, forgive us, Father, where we sin against you. We pray, Father, for our nation, and, and uh, we just pray, Father, that the people of this nation would turn to you, and uh, we could again once be a uh, a great nation, Father. We we just we know you have blessed this nation in so many ways. We just can pray that you continue to bless us. We pray, Father, all these things through your Son Jesus' holy name. Amen.